Hello friends, welcome to GT Science Tutorial. In this video, I am going to explain about basic concept of thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is a very important term and it is directly related to the flow of heat. We know that heat energy can be converted to any form of energy. So it is very important to know about the flow of heat and that study is done in thermodynamics. So in this video, we are going to see what thermodynamics actually is and what are the different terms related to the thermodynamics so that if we know that term, it will be very easy for us to understand about thermodynamics. So let's start. First of all, we need to understand what thermodynamics actually is. Literally, thermodynamic means flow of heat. We know that heat energy is related to all the other forms of energy such as thermal energy, thermal energy, chemical energy, chemical energy, mechanical energy. So these are some of the energies which is directly related to heat energy. So thermodynamics is the study of flow of heat. Okay, Thermodynamics deals with the study of flow of heat. So in this way thermodynamics can be defined as thermodynamics can be defined as defined as the flow the stud, the study study of flow of heat flow of heat into the system into the system or out of the system or out of the system so thermodynamics is the branch of science which deals with the study of flow of heat into the system or out of the system wherever there is change of energy thermodynamics is there thermodynamics helps us to know whether a reaction happens or not it can tell why a reaction happens but it won't take how the reaction happens okay it can tell us why it can happen so we can easily predict whether a reaction happens or not on the basis of certain data that are related to thermodynamics there are four laws of thermodynamics zeroth law first law second law and third law zeroth law of thermodynamics is that if two systems are in uh, thermal equilibrium with the third system then they are in thermal equilibrium with one another as well suppose this is one system this is another system and I am the third system if this system is in thermal equilibrium with me and this system is also in thermal equilibrium with me then these two are in thermal equilibrium with one another as well that is the zeroth law first law says that energy can neither be created nor can be destroyed but can be changed from one form to another A very old definition of energy right that is the first law of thermodynamics second law of thermodynamics is whether the reaction is spontaneous or not or simply you can say that it gives us the information about the entropy okay it gives the concept about the entropy and finally the third law says that at absolute zero of temperature a perfectly crystalline body or a per perfectly crystalline solid has zero entropy so these are the fourth laws of thermodynamics now let's see some of the terms that are related to thermodynamics and the without understanding which it will be very difficult to understand thermodynamics let's see them one by one first of all let's understand about system surrounding universe and boundary probably the most useful term in thermodynamics first of all let's understand what system actually is see the universe is the whole world and any part of the system under study is called the system suppose we have a chemical reaction then the chemical reaction has certain effect around it so the reason in which there is the effect of that chemical reaction is called the system okay so you can simply say the part of the 
द पार्ट ऑफ द यूनिवर्स द पार्ट ऑफ द यूनिवर्स अंडर स्टडी अंडर स्टडी इज कॉल्ड इज कॉल्ड सिस्टम इज कॉल्ड सिस्टम लेटेस्ट अंडरस्टैंड दिस बाय फिगर सपोज वी हैव अ बिकर देन एनीथिंग इन साइड इट इज कॉल्ड दिस सिस्टम इफ दे आर इन सम प्रोसेस ओके इफ केमिकल रिएक्शन इज हैपनिंग इन साइड देयर देन दिस इज द सिस्टम सिस्टम नाउ सराउंडिंग मीन्स the part of the uh, the part of the universe except that system part if you remove that system part whatever part is remaining in the universe that is called surrounding so surrounding can be defined as the part the part of the universe the part of the universe except system except system is called the you uh, surrounding right so any part this all part is called what what is it called surrounding surrounding okay any part that is called surrounding that is outside of system now the boundary boundary separates this system and the surrounding okay it is the barrier so boundary can be defined as the barrier the barrier which separates which separates the system system and surrounding is called what yes boundary so the barrier which separates the system and the surrounding is called boundary in this particular case here this is the boundary this is boundary and obviously you must have understood what universe actually is universe is simply the combination of system and surrounding system and surrounding system and surrounding okay so universe is the combination of the system and the surrounding so let me uh, explain one more time the system is the part of the universe that is under study any change of variable that is pressure temperature volume is taken in system that happens in system only okay and the part of the universe except the system is called surrounding the boundary that separates that may be uh, imaginary boundary or imaginary line okay so any part of the system that separates system and surrounding is called the boundary sorry the barrier it is the barrier which separates system and surrounding and the universe is the combination of system and surrounding so i hope you understood about system surrounding boundary and universe now let's see another useful term we already know a system and surrounding is separated by a boundary and the boundary is of different types they may be permeable boundary or adiabatic boundary or diathermal boundary and because of that matter and energy can be exchanged between the system and the surrounding on the basis of that there are three types of systems they are open system closed system and isolated system so let's understand them one by one first of all let's understand open system what is the meaning of open system open system is the system in which there is a exchange of both matter and energy between the system and surrounding okay exchange exchange of both matter matter and energy so there is exchange of both matter and energy in case of open system let me explain that with a diagram suppose this is the system part and around it obviously there is surrounding yes now here it is this is the boundary right now let us consider this boundary is permeable this boundary is permeable if this boundary is permeable that means anything can be exchanged so matter as well as energy will be exchanged or they will 
either get or they will either gain or they will either lose okay with the surrounding they will directly exchange matter and energy with the surrounding an example of that might be if you take hot water in a cup or a glass then what will happen after some time some matter that little amount of water is evaporated and the volume of water decreases and energy also gets transmitted that means hot water gets converted into a cold water so in that particular case matter as well as energy has been exchanged so that is called open system and in this type of system the boundary is permeable that means anything can be exchanged okay number two is closed system closed system this is the type of system in which only energy gets changed but matter do not get changed let us take an example if the boundary here if the boundary here is diathermal diathermal that means it can only let the system to exchange its energy but matter will not be exchanged example an example of that is if you take a bottle water bottle and if you put one liter of water in that and if you leave it in uh, sunlight then what will happen after some time it will gain some heat energy but is the matter changing will the volume of water decrease or increase no the volume remains the same only the temperature is changing that means only the heat energy is being exchanged but matter is not exchanging so that type of system is called closed system that means only heat is exchanged exchanged and matter matter remains same matter remains same that is the matter is not exchanged between the system and surrounding and the last one is isolated system isolated system isolated it is clear from the word that means it will not exchange anything with the surrounding it will neither exchange energy nor matter neither energy nor matter matter is exchanged between the system and the surrounding and in this particular case the <coughs> wall will be adiabatic that means it will not let anything to change an example of that is if you put hot water in a thermos flask then what will happen after some time as well the temperature remains the same in the matter do not even the matter do not get exchanged right so in that particular case neither matter nor energy is being exchanged and that type of system is called isolated system so i hope you understood about the three types of system now let's see some more important terms Suppose a system consists of many chemical species then that type of system is called macroscopic system and the properties of those microscope sorry macroscopic system is called macroscopic properties that means if a system consists a large number of chemical species then only it is called macroscopic system okay and let me write the definition of it if the system consists consists a large number of a large number of chemical species chemical species then the system then the system is called macroscopic system macroscopic system and the properties in the properties of that system of that system is called macroscopic properties macroscopic properties so this is the definition of macroscopic system and macroscopic properties now there are two types of macroscopic properties they are extensive extensive property and another one is intensive property 
extensive property so what is the meaning of this extensive property and intensive property this is very important to know so first of all let's understand about the extensive property extensive property extensive property so extensive property is the property of the macroscopic system which is related to the amount which is related to the amount of substance okay it depends on the amount of substance and they are uh, direct they are additive in nature as well so it depends it depends on the quantity on the quantity and it is additive in nature it is additive in nature so all the properties which depend on the quantity of the matter present in the macroscopic uh, system and if they are additive in nature they are called extensive properties let us consider an example there is a beaker in which there is 50 ml of volume 50 ml of volume there is another beaker which also has 50 ml of volume now if we mix them in a new beaker then the total volume will be how much yes you are correct 100 ml here what do we see this volume obviously depends on the quantity of matter right and they are being added right 50 plus 50 is equal to 100 that means they are showing additive nature so this property that is volume is extensive property not only volume there are many other properties as well like mass volume mass volume entropy enthalpy enthalpy gibbs free energy gibbs free energy etc so these are the properties that depends on the quantity present in the system and they are additive in nature so they are called extensive property now another property is i'll write over here intensive property intensive property so intensive property let me write that it depends it depends on the nature it depends on the nature of the substance substance and non additive and they are non additive in nature in nature example might be temperature pressure surface tension surface tension similarly viscosity viscosity etc so these are some of the example of intensive property <coughs> let me show you an example uh, let me write over here sorry this is zigzag i started there and i'm ending over here okay so let us consider a beaker in which there is 50 ml of water <coughs> another beaker which which has 30 ml of water and the uh, beaker in which there is 50 ml of water its temperature is 80 degree celsius and its temperature is 20 degree celsius now if we mix them if we mix them in a big beaker then its volume will be how much yes you are correct we need to add them that is 80 ml right its volume will be 80 ml now what will be the temperature will they also get added what do you think no they won't get added that is the temperature of the hot water will decrease and the temperature of the cold water will increase and they will adjust some uh, somewhere between them right so its average is 60 so its temperature sorry <coughs> its average is 50 so its temperature will be 50 degrees celsius so what do we see from here is that volume is being added that is it is showing additive nature Temperature is not showing additive nature. So it is intensive property. Okay, just like that uh, pressure is also an intensive property. Not only that viscosity, uh, our surface tension, freezing point, boiling point, refractive index, etc. These are all the intensive property of the macroscopic uh, system. Now let's understand another term.
Now let's understand another important term that is thermodynamic equilibrium and non-equilibrium. Let us consider an example. There is a cylinder and it is fitted with a piston. There is a cylinder, it is fitted with a piston and inside of which there is gas. Okay, these are the gas. Now, if the piston is not moving, then the temperature and different other properties of the gas will remain same. Then that is called thermodynamic equilibrium. That means the different properties of the gas inside the cylinder should remain the same or it should not change with time. That is, if, if the property, if the properties of the system, if the properties of the system does do not change, do not change with time, do not change with time, it is called, it is called thermodynamic equilibrium, it is called to be in thermodynamic equilibrium thermodynamic equilibrium i write equilibrium as eqm okay so for a system to be in thermodynamic equilibrium it must satisfy different criteria there are three criteria that must be satisfied by the system in order to be in thermodynamic equilibrium the first one is thermal equilibrium thermal equilibrium that means the system must have thermal equilibrium in order to, in order to be in thermodynamic equilibrium thermal equilibrium means the temperature in the system should remain same in any point of the system okay that is the temperature of this region and this region should be same the temperature should not change okay the temperature the temperature of the temperature of the substance substance in this particular case gas should should remain should remain the same should remain the same at all at all point at all point and and heat should not be and heat should not be exchanged exchanged with surrounding with surrounding obviously if the heat is being exchanged with the surrounding then the temperature inside the system will obviously fluctuate right so what i am trying to say is that Thermal equilibrium is the condition of the system in which it has a same temperature throughout the system at all the time. Okay, it will not exchange heat energy with the surrounding. So in this particular case, T1 will be equal to T2. This T1 is the temperature of the system and T2 is the temperature of the surrounding. They will remain same or they will remain same. That's why they want exchange heat energy. Okay, the second one is mechanical energy. Make, sorry mechanical equilibrium mechanical equilibrium this is the second uh, this is the second criteria for a system to that must be followed in order to be in thermodynamic equilibrium now mechanical equilibrium is related with pressure as well now let us consider a condition this is the piston and we suddenly push the piston this is the piston and we suddenly push the piston what will happen the pressure inside it will obviously change right and the gas near the piston will feel more pressure in first and they will get more heated but after some time if we keep leaving that after some time the pressure in the temperature inside that will be will remain constant now now that condition is called mechanical equilibrium even if the pressure changed after some time it is now in equilibrium that all pressure at all the point will remain same so that condition is called mechanical equilibrium that means if the pressure 
इफ द प्रेसर इन द सिस्टम रिमेन्स रिमेन्स कॉन्स्टेंट कॉन्स्टेंट देन इट इज कॉल्ड इन मैकेनिकल इक्विलिब्रियम नाउ लेट्स ओके द थर्ड वन द थर्ड क्राइटेरिया इज केमिकल इक्विलिब्रियम केमिकल इक्विलिब्रियम नाउ लेट इज कंसिडर इन साइड द सिस्टम देर आर मेनी केमिकल स्पेसिज और गेस गैसियस ऑब्वियसली नाउ दे आर रिएक्टिंग विथ इच अदर देन ऑब्वियसली देर विल बी फॉरवर्ड रिएक्शन बट देर शुड बी बैकवर्ड रिएक्शन एज वेल दैट मीन्स इफ इन अ सिस्टम देर इज forward reaction and backward reaction happening on and if the rate of forward reaction and backward reaction is equal then that system is called in it said to be in chemical equilibrium if rate of if rate of forward and backward reaction is same same so if the rate of forward and backward reaction is same then that system is said to be in chemical equilibrium and to be in thermodynamic equilibrium the system must follow all three equilibrium that means it must have thermal equilibrium that is the temperature should not change mechanical equilibrium that is the pressure should not change and chemical equilibrium that is the rate of forward reaction and backward reaction will always be same so these are the three criteria that must be followed by a system in order to be a in thermodynamic equilibrium now non thermo sorry th uh, thermodynamic non equilibrium condition is that in which any of this equilibrium does not ex exist if the temperature is changing then that is in non equilibrium if the pressure is changing that is also non equilibrium and if chemical like if rate of forward reaction and backward reaction is not same that is also in non equilibrium condition so this is what thermodynamic equilibrium and non equilibrium condition actually is now let's see the last one and one of the most important one that is the reversible and re irreversible process suppose the thermodynamic process happens infinitesimally slowly in infinite step that is in each step the driving force is slightly greater that is infinitesimally greater than the opposing force then the system will always remain in equilibrium then that system is called reversible process let me write it okay for reversible process if the if the thermodynamic process if the thermodynamic process happens happens or takes place infinitesimally slowly slowly then then it then it will be it will be in thermodynamic equilibrium thermodynamic equilibrium this condition or this process is called is called as reversible process reversible process reversible process the driving force the driving force is infinitesimally greater than greater than opposing force opposing force that is the driving force will be slightly greater than the opposing force then that type of system will be in thermodynamic equilibrium all the time and that is called re reversible process but irreversible irreversible process means sudden change okay if the system is if the thermodynamic process is happening suddenly then obviously that will not be in thermodynamic equilibrium and that type of process is called irreversible process so if if the thermodynamic process if the thermodynamic process takes place takes place rapidly 
takes place rapidly then then it is called irreversible process irreversible process irreversible process got confused let me explain this with a simple diagram suppose there is a cylinder in which there is gas and this is a weightless and frictionless piston obviously this does not exist in real life but still let's consider this is the weightless and frictionless piston okay now over it let's drop one uh, only one sand one sand we drop it what will happen the piston might go little bit inside and it happens so slow that the thermodynamic equilibrium will be managed over there will still be over there let's drop another sand the same thing will happen because the driving force is way slightly greater than the opposing force in that same way in infinite process we drop infinite number of sand particles so what will happen in each step it will be in thermodynamic equilibrium because it is happening slowly we are doing we are putting sand one by one so it will keep on going and in every step it will maintain the equilibrium and that process will be in that process is reversible process but on the other hand let's just put 2 kg of sand over it at the same time just drop it what will happen the piston will suddenly go down that process happens so fast and this type of process cannot maintain the thermodynamic equilibrium inside it in that process so this type of process is called irreversible process okay they won't be reversible now every sorry every thing that is happening in the nature they are all irreversible process okay reversible process is imaginary because that takes uh, infinite number of times and that is obviously not possible and it needs weightless and frictionless piston type okay so that is not possible everything that is happening around us every thermodynamic process every natural process is an irreversible process okay so i hope you understood about reversible and irreversible process as well so let me give a small revision what we read yes uh, what we read today the first one the first thing that we read today was the definition of thermodynamics and then after that we saw some terms related to thermodynamics the first one was system surrounding boundary and universe then after that we read about three types of system they are <coughs> open system closed system and isolated system then we saw uh, intensive property and extensive property that is the macroscopic property after that we saw thermodynamic equilibrium non equilibrium and finally we saw about reversible and irreversible process all these terms are frequently used in thermodynamics if you understand about these terms it will be very easier for you to understand about thermodynamics that's all in this video if you like the video please share this video as much as you can and thank you for watching the video